when you download all three of the zip files, this is what they'll look like. So three zips each have three different folders with the information inside of each that we'll work on. Um, if you'll follow along on the handout that I just gave you. Here you go, Chelsea. The first thing we're going to create is a department poster. Uh, Miss Ashley Howard took all of the photographs of the faculty members, and so I had access to them. We want to make a poster that features everyone's photograph in, the, uh, in this particular design. And a Mondrian style tends to help out when creating this. Let's see if I had one to give you an idea of what it looks like. So this is kind of what we're going to be working towards, and I'll show you how to tweak this up once we've finished. But you're going to make a simple layout, 11 by 17. We're going to grid it off and then place the pictures inside of it. Here's some things to think about. So let's make the new document. And you can see how I've got it set up. <clears throat> Tabloid size, 11 by 17, portrait. The number of columns is going to play an important feature. The easiest thing you can do to divide up your, uh, your page is to divide it up into columns. Newspapers and magazines are done this way. We're going to do the same thing for this particular layout. Let's see, how many do we need? Five columns? Excuse me, four columns. We're not going to worry about a gutter, so I'm going to set that back down to zero. We're going to keep our margins at half an inch on all sides. We'll say OK to this. Come on, there we go. So this is our basic layout that we're working on. You can already see a structure starting to fill up. <clears throat> Within this, we now need to give it some horizontal rules going all the way down our page. I want you to reset your, um, your rulers at the very top. Let me zoom in to show you what I'm talking about. If you didn't know, I've got my rulers turned on. The zero point is usually at the top left-hand corner of the page. What I want the zero point to be is the top left-hand margin of the page. So right now, you can see it's set to zero here. If you need to move your ruler around, click at the very top left-hand corner and drag. You can see I'm moving my crosshair. And wherever I let go, that's where my new zero point will be at. So if I wanted it to be right at the margin, click and drag to the margin. And this is where my zero point is going to be at from here. The reason why I want to do this is because I want to have two and a quarter inch squares from this point instead of from the edge of my page. Y'all tracking with me? Make sense? All right. Y'all know how to make uh, horizontal guides. I've got my ruler pulled out, so I'm just going to click and drag down. And I'm looking at my cursor till it says two and a quarter. And just add two and a quarter from each one from there. So one and four and a half, six and three quarter. There it is. By the way, if you hold down your shift key, it'll snap to whatever <coughs> guides you have on your ruler. Nine, I think one more. Eleven and one quarter. Cool. Look simple enough? Y'all can do it? Very, very easy. Just to let you know, this bottom portion, you don't have to go all the way down. There will be a large area open at the very, very bottom to work with. All right, next thing. Let's bring in a color scheme that we can work from. The only thing I'm asking for this color scheme is that dark blue be a part of your colors. So we've used Cooler before to create a color scheme, and that's under your extensions. I'm going to set mine up to just be an analogous color scheme. And I need to make sure that one of these swatches down here is in the dark blue range. Everything else I can pull from, let's see. Maybe I'll make one of them lighter. That'll work out from there. So I've got nice five colors that I can work from. I know they're going to look good because they're all in the same color harmony. Remember, you can add it to your swatches. So now when I choose colors, I've got them saved up in my color swatches as well. We'll get rid of that. And I'm going to set my background to be that dark blue color just by making a rectangle to fit in the background. And fill it in with blue. There we go. All good. Now comes the fun part, actually making each of the squares to place our pictures into. 
there's a couple of things I want you to be aware of. So I'm going to make one square. Use a picture frame. If you turn on under view your guides, make sure <coughs> snap to guides is turned on and also I turn on my smart guides. This will ensure that everything that I create will be the exact size and the exact placement that I want it to be. You'll see why that's important once we start making them. But then it's just a matter of clicking and dragging and since I've got snap turned on, it's going to snap right to those guides that I've created. Click and drag very, very quickly to draw off. If you wanted to go even quicker, once you've got one made, you can use your selection tool. Hold down that option key, click and drag. You've already got four of them made. You can select the four, click and drag all of those as well. 4, 8, 12... There are 16 of them. You're going to need 14 boxes. I'm going to get rid of these two that I've created. Am I going too quick for y'all? All simple, all good. Here's the next thing. This is going to be a good little tip to know. I want you to format the boxes to have a six point stroke white going around each of the box. So I'm going to select one of them. For my stroke color, which is right here, we're going to set it to white. Let's set it to six points so this is what it will look like I'm even going to give it a fill color you don't have to just so I know that it's been uh, been created now I need to do the same thing for each of the other ones if you make an object ha to have a certain style so the the fill color the stroke color and you want to reuse that style over and over again just as there's paragraph styles or character styles what are those used for text, text. if you want to restyle text there's also object styles that you can save. If you go to Window, I may actually have it already open. Uh, window, Styles, there's the Object Style. Remember paragraph and characters are for text? Well, Object, Styles. Allow me to select objects and save those styles within here. And you can create a new style. Obviously, there's Object Style 1. I'll give it a name box. And you can see that it's saving all of the information for the fill, the stroke, anything that I save from there. We'll say OK to that. Now when I can select multiple things, click once, and it's automatically styled that way very, very quickly. If I wanted to change up any of these, all I've got to do is change the box style from in here. So let's say I didn't like that fill color. If I wanted it to be red, well, I've changed the style here. If I say OK, now they're all changed at the same time. Now that's smart. That's smart right there. Okay, working smart here. All right, got all my boxes loaded up. Everything's looking good. Let's throw in some uh, some pictures to work with. Remember, if you want to load up multiple pictures at the same time, we did this on our last project. Go to File and Place. In our case, it's saved in the Art Department. <clears throat> we'll select all of our pictures, and we'll say OK. <clears throat> Remember, it's going to hang on to my cursor until I click where I want it to go. So all 12 pictures are loaded in there, working really, really quick. You will have two of them left over, and you'll see what I'll do with those two leftovers in just a second. Once I've got it on here, I, of course, I need to reposition each of the pictures so that they, uh, they fit. I can see the pictures, um, seeing just part of Mr. Cook's eye isn't enough. you got to see the whole face. You can select all of them, and using the auto, um, auto fit, scale them down proportionally. So that'll get you there most of the way. Here's what I do whenever you have to line up people's pictures. It's kind of the rule of thumb for any graphic design. You want to make sure the size of their heads and the position of their eyes is consistent for each text frame. So if I'm looking at Mr. Cook, obviously I'm chopping off the top of his head. That's not going to do, so we're going to need to pull it down. It's best to have the eyes in kind of that top two-thirds, so if I push them up, right about there will we'll do good. You never really want to have them directly center in the frame. Giving it off-center just a little bit is actually a little bit more visually pleasing. No cameraman's ever going to take people's picture exactly the same, so some are going to be larger, some are going to be smaller. This is where tweaking will be, uh, be necessary. But I want everybody's eyes to line up right along that particular line. So if I had Dr. Miley, scale him down. Maybe he's a little bit too big. We'll 
Don't tell him I said that. Not in that way. No, I'm sorry. Not in that way. Oh, man, I'm recording this, too. Okay. <laughs> I could get away. Since I can't make midis too much smaller, I can make some a lot bigger. But you get the point. I'm moving them down so that their eyes and head are about the same position and same size for everyone. And I would do this for the rest of everybody else that's on here as well. I'm not going to let you all watch me do this for the entire thing. The only other thing you're going to do at the very bottom, you're going to add the words Mississippi College to this, uh, to this border. And you should have something that will look close to this. This is the one I did ahead of time. Notice they're all about the same size, eyes in the same position. I typed out Mississippi College and Art Department in two different boxes. This way I can easily move them around and scale them without having to worry about just one box. Here's the beauty of working in this grid type layout. Right now, this design doesn't look very good because everything's just weighted at the top of our screen. What I want to do is have things kind of flow from one area into the other area. and I want to be able to pick up on some of the colors that I've used uh, throughout the bottom. Since I've got this nice grid structure, everything's the same size, I can start to move things around and keep them in line and in place. This is where your, uh, your blank ones come in. You can put a blank object where it needs to be and start moving it around, placing things a little bit different. So opening up some of these holes, we'll go back into preview mode, now I'm starting to borrow certain colors from one area to the other. This is kind of the idea that I pulled from from this one. Open areas, open areas. I'm using some of the other colors that I've used. You can play around, move things around. You can even use a smaller uh, squares inside of the square because it's still using that same area of the grid. If you want to get even more fancy, you can make some of the pictures even larger. Now they're still taking up the same amount of area, they're just larger pictures, but they still fit within the grid that I created. Uh, this is a great way of adding emphasis to certain people or just uh, just kind of adding a little bit more variety to the, uh, to the style that you created. Notice that I've even moved the words from the bottom to the top, so now they're even more incorporated into what I'm working with. Have I lost everybody? Understand what I'm looking for? Very, very simple. I will give you one thing to think about when you do this. When you make things larger, and especially if you're working in the grid, pay attention. Whoop, sorry about that. Pay attention that things are lining up. Notice that this one's off by just a little bit, so I would need to nudge it and keep on working from there. It's very easy to get things off once you start moving them around. This is where that snap to guide and um, your um, smart guides come in handy. I can take these, move it over. Come on. I could move his picture over. There we go. That actually lines up a lot better. And so now the uh, the edges look like one solid white line rather than just a bunch of little squares. If you really wanted to redo it, I may actually go back over and draw a line on top of that, but I'm just trying to keep it simple for you when making each one of these from there. All cool? Know what I'm looking for for this one? Very, very simple. Establish your grid, throw in the pictures, make sure when you scale them that they're all proportional and we'll go from there. That's the first one. Here's the second one. Second one's just as simple. I'm actually giving you the layout for this one, the mini from one layout. So once you open up this InDesign document, it's actually three different pages. With this particular style, rather than having a structured, uh, structured grid where everything is the exact same size, this time you're using the Mondrian layout a little bit more fluid. You've got different size rectangles. Some are tall, some are more square and skinny. Um, but you get to come up with your own particular style. For this first one, I'm giving you one image. I want you to repeat this image inside of each of the blue squares that are inside of here. Here's how we're going to do it. This tends to work better if you have high resolution images, but I'm going to copy this one. So edit, copy, and paste it into each of the blue areas. Paste into We'll do the same. Option Command V. Go very quickly. And this one, when I pasted it, went all the way up to the top. There we go. Shift Command V. Shift Command V. 
to make my design look a little bit more appealing, I'm going to zoom in on a texture or a specific area of this chair to emphasize it. So I've got it selected, just the image. Holding down shift, make sure shift is held because you don't want to stretch these out. Zoom in. So now I've taken a from picture of just a, a chair and turned it into a texture to use. This works because all of the colors are exactly the same. All of the style and all of the, uh, the textures are exactly the same. So if I wanted to work on this one, hold down shift, maybe I'd use the, the arm or the leg. Don't be afraid of the white space. Don't feel like you have to fill in everything with a solid color. But I'm looking for some area to emphasize. Let's see, what do you think? Maybe the arc of the chair for this one. What I'm looking for is a good balance. And I'm trying not to show the exact same thing for each, each particular area. Maybe that works. What area do you think here? You tell me. Arm? Yeah, that looks good. Maybe a little bit larger. Now remember when you do blow things up, I know this is a really high quality image, but right now it's looking pixelated. You Remember you can always go to View, Display Performance, and turn on the high quality display, and this will give you a better, uh, better rendering of each thing <coughs> after a couple of minutes. There we go. That one's obviously rendering. There we go. Now that one's rendering better as well. So with this one, you've got it laid out. This is a much better layout, and I've used just one image. Uh, we do this a lot in newspapers and in magazines. A lot of times you need to fill up an entire area, but you just don't have enough pictures to work with. Take one photograph and find something interesting that you can repeat within that photograph. For the rest of the layouts, actually I need to get rid of this. That was from the last class. I'm giving you the area, but I'm not giving you the design. I want you to come up with your own Mondrian layout within the columns that I've given you. So you will take your picture box, drag it out, create your own style, whatever you want it to be. In general, just kind of a good rule of thumb, keep the areas uh, prime numbers. Two, three, or five boxes tend to work best. If you get too many of them, tends to be very, very uh, busy after a while. But you, you some text with it? Yes, you will put text. I'll get to that. Thank you for reminding me of that. But whatever you come up with... You just use the bottom half? Just the bottom half. Just this particular area. Yes. You will have text. So just as this top one has for green apple, it's timeless, classic, and juicy. For the strawberry, this one's comfortable, stylish, and sweet. So one of your boxes needs to have this lettering in here with a solid color background with some sort of formatting in with this one. For the next one, the licorice, notice this one has four panels. So four of them needs to have this text in here as well. Needs to only use this particular photograph. The last thing you're going to do, once you've got them all laid out, um, choose a color worthy of this photograph to recolor the text that I've given. When you have it, it'll all be just in black. So naturally, in this case, I can use my eyedropper tool. Where is it? There we go. I can pick up on this green. I can pick up on this red. Kind of this dark uh, dark brown would look really, really well if I wanted to add that. Ooh. Of course, without the outline. Would look really, really well with the, uh, the type that I have. Go away. There we go because I'm using the same colors within the photographs from there. Any questions on this one? This one's a lot of fun because you're coming up with your own Mondrian layout for the last ones. Very last one. Once you get these two knocked out, <coughs> is the uh, multiple purpose flyer. With this one, you're going to create a flyer for a home advertisement. They're trying to sell their house. So I'm giving you the pictures of the house, pictures of the realtor, and also the text information that goes with it. And this is a Word document, so I'll open that one up too. This is essentially the style 
that I'm looking for. And you can see, how do I use the Mondrian layout here? See the pictures at the top? Where else do you see it? The text. The text is in a Mondrian layout. The whole thing is kind of a Mondrian inside of a Mondrian. So for this one, let's make a new one, new document. This one's going to be a regular letter size, and it's going to have five columns. No gutter. We're going to turn off facing pages because I'm going to get two different pages from here. We'll say OK. We're only, for now, just going to work on this top one. You're going to divide your page up into three separate areas. Um, if somebody was coming to me and asking for a flyer or for a logo, it's great to have just a template that I can pull from. So what we're creating is a template where the top part is going to be the header, just the, the attention-grabbing text. The middle part is going to be just pictures, and the bottom part is going to be just the information. So no longer do I have to just sit down and kind of buckshot all the information around the, uh, the page. I know exactly where I want to put everything that's going to be given to me, no matter how much information I have. Only the header, only the images, and only the other information is going to go here. So on the, in the, uh, the document that you did create, let's divide this up. I'm going to go into my master's page to do this. Remember, if you double-click the master, it'll affect both of these at the same time. And I'm just going to make a horizontal rule right at, what was it, two and a half? Yeah, two and a half and six inches. Right there. So when I go back to page one, there's my rulers on page one and also on page two. Everything that's a header goes in this area. Everything that's pictures only in this area. Everything else down here. So let's look at the... Uh, Let's look at the pictures that were given to me. So if you're trying to sell a house, has anybody ever sold a house? Moved? Does that move that? Okay. What's the most important picture? I've got interiors. I've got exteriors. This one? Why this one? Because it's the whole house. Exactly. When somebody sees it, that's usually the first one. So obviously, I want this one to be the most predominant picture. I've got five pictures. I've got five different little areas. Well, I wouldn't want to do something like this where I put a picture tall inside of that one. So one of these needs to be larger in some way. I could scale it out. Let's drop this one in here and see what it looks like. Multiple purpose. So there's the house. The fun part is making everything fit. Now it fits pretty well going through here. Eh, it's going to crop off something. So maybe I need to readjust the size down to here. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. Don't hold down the shift when you scale it. Ah. Do select just the, the picture frame. So that'll fit pretty well within this one. I can always move things over. This also leaves open some other areas. Now I've got four pictures left. This one works out really well to put four pictures here. Since it's a Mondrian layout, I can move things around. It doesn't have to be on this side. I can put it on this side and put other pictures here. I could maybe scale it out and put four pictures down here at the bottom. The main thing is only this area is going to contain the pictures that I'm working on. It's up to you how you want to do it and how you want to work through it as well. Make sense? All good? I'm going to jump to my regular layout just to kind of go quickly and show you what else we're looking for. As soon as you've got it created, choose your color palette. What kind of colors am I, am I using? Blues and browns, yeah, tans. Where did I get those picture or those those colors from? From my picture, exactly. If you use colors from the pictures that you have, it'll make a more cohesive type design. When you go to the text document that I gave you, I've divided it up for you. So here's obviously the heading, obviously the body copy, and uh, don't forget to include the picture and the map and his information. Just like with the pictures you have certain information is more important than others. So obviously they want heading to be the most important. So I can make for sale or for the, uh, the, the uh, address pretty large. For the body, usually the price of the house is pretty important or the information about the house is pretty important. So in my design, I let it take up the most room. Everything else was kind of just bullet pointed type information. Remember we created bullet points for the last project. 
and of course his information in the picture can be swapped around as well. The best part about this is you can move things around. It doesn't have to stay within the structure that you have. <clears throat> I've got five columns. I could easily move this out. I could have had this take up all five columns. I could make my text be a little bit smaller, maybe not so much letting if I did that. Let's change it back to auto. Ah, much better. If it was to take up all five columns, now I've got all this area down here to, to uh, contend with. Change that to a two column type layout. I'd have to reformat that. Maybe my picture could go something like this. <clears throat> but I'm staying within the frames that I'm allotted. I can easily create something, rechange it up, and in general it'll still look good because I know the structure is exactly the same. Whoop, got the wrong thing selected. There we go. I got this information from an actual Remax place so they're getting good free advertisement right now. Oh, maybe not two columns. Yeah, there we go. The one column tends to work out pretty well. But everything is staying within this particular style and it works out. So if somebody comes to you and says, hey, can you do something for me? Can you make a flyer, make a poster? Using a Mondrian style, you know what you can do with it. Divide up your page into different panels, different sections. They don't have to be structured as uh, with the um, with the poster, it can be a little bit more fluid, but it works out and works really, really well and really quickly. For your homework, once you finish this up, on the second page, I want you to find an object that you would want to sell. Your car, coffee mug, books, whatever you have. Take pictures of that object. So if, if you don't have a camera or can't find something, find images online. But take an overall picture, take little detail pictures, just as with... Um, with this one, they took a picture of just the house and then they went to in individual rooms. Same thing for whatever object or product that you have. Make a for sale flyer for that object that uses the Mondrian layout for that design. All good? Cool. All right. Remember, these are due on the, the 20, 24th, so we've got about two or three weeks. Um, next class period, I will do another layout style. So, and we'll do a couple of more uh, projects with this one. Not saying we're going to do three of them. It'll probably be just a couple to give you an idea of exercises to, uh, to practice with it. All good? Okay. Turn your computer back over to y'all. Let y'all get started. Same layout, but you can uh, customize it however you want. Heading, pictures, body. Doop, doop, doop.